Hi everyone, David here. Thanks for coming back for another video. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm doing okay, I think. So um, I'm hungry though. I haven't had dinner yet, so I'm going to finish this soon. Um, so today's video, we are going back to Aichi Prefecture. Um, I went to the Ghibli Park. Uh, do you know Studio Ghibli? Hopefully you do, because I made a whole video about Studio Ghibli um, a month or so ago. And also, uh, about a month ago, I made a video when I went to Aichi to go to the Ghibli Park uh, for the first time. Um, now, the Ghibli Park, yeah, celebrating Studio Ghibli, uh, opened in November 2022. And um, it's divided into three areas. There's a big area, which is the uh, Ghibli Grand Warehouse, the Daisoko. Uh, that's the one I made a video about last time. But because the tickets were really hard to get, I couldn't get the tickets for all areas on the same day. So I did the Grand Warehouse on one day and I got tickets for the other two places um, at the end of January. So finally I've made my video about it. Thanks for waiting. Um, so what are the two areas? Uh, at the moment they are, um, what's, it, what's it called, Dondoko no Mori, which is the Dondoko Forest, uh, which is concerned mostly with the Totoro uh, stuff and also this um, Seishun no Oka, which is the Hill of Youth. That's mostly based on the Whisper of the Heart, uh, Mimi Osumiseba movie. And also the Cat Returns, um, what's it called? Neko, Neko Ongai, Ongaishi? I forgot the name. Um, so two movies, kind of not set in the same universe, but some there's some connections between them. Uh, check those out on Netflix if you're outside Japan. Um, I think m most of them are on Netflix now. Definitely watch them all, I love it. And yeah, like I said, watch my Ghibli video about uh, which ones you should watch and we'll just watch them all, it's good. Um, so I'm gonna look at those. There are actually two more areas coming soon. I think one is coming at the end of 2023 and one in spring of 2024. Um, I forgot which order they are, but there's gonna be um, some kind of magic based area, uh, including things like Howl's Moving Castle and presumably Kiki's delivery service as well. And the second one is gonna be the Princess Mononoke uh, area. So a lot of kind of traditional Japan, Japanese kind of uh, Iron Age stuff. Um, so check those out. I guess I'll go there at some point next year and uh, you'll get part three of this video. Um, so I'm just gonna stop talking. You can watch this video, see the other two areas. I will talk a little bit at the end. What do I thought about the whole park and recommendations, what to do if you wanna go there. Uh, but before we do that, please subscribe, uh, like this video, share the video to all your Ghibli friends, all your Japan friends too, and also leave a comment, which uh, part do you want to go to? I'd, I'd appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to pass over to myself, I'm going to do some commentary and see you on the other side. Okay. Okay, here we are back at the uh, Expo 2005 uh, Commemoration Park. And there's the Ghibli Park sign on the side. A bit cold and snowy today. And I was waiting here at the big elevator again. I checked the guidebook, but I still don't really know what this is uh, based on, but just very Ghibli-esque. Now I did have an extra ticket to see the Daisoko Grand Warehouse one more time, uh, but because of the kind of scheduling conflict, I only had about uh, 40 minutes to stay there. So I had a bit of a look inside again. Very nice air airship there. But I did check the guidebook and I found a few things that I'd missed last time. Uh, so from up on Puppy Hill had a little area too, this uh, little storeroom from the uh, student building, all sorts of odds and ends. Uh, I think that gets all cleared out in the movie. So that's from uh, Kokuriko Zakakara. And I did have a chance to go to the movie theatre again. Again, I couldn't take a video inside, but this is the entrance hall I was allowed. Um, I went to see that Kuja Tori, uh, Kujira Tori uh, movie again, that was very nice. And uh, on the way now to the second area, uh, this is kind of spirited away, reminiscent area with that little um, stone statue, if you remember that from the movie. Uh, there's not really much for spirited away though, so uh, that was just a little little landmark on the way. Now it was a little bit of a trek to get to the uh, Dondokomori. Uh, it took me about, well, it takes about 20 minutes I think. I was kind of power walking for about 15 minutes because I wanted to get there on time. Yeah, after a long route and kind of dangerous slope, I made it finally. All the way to this area, which is um, Mei and Satsuki's house from my neighbor Totoro. Um, this was actually built several years ago when it was the actual 2005 Expo, uh, but recreated lovingly from the movie, even the uh, Boro Boro uh, parts of the house. So you can look inside um, around here. So this is the father's study. You can see all the um, kind of uh, anthropological studies he was doing. 
uh, really felt really lived in and real. And around the back you can see his bike and even there uh, the kids sandals. And this is the, so the back area and even the water pump as well. Yep, very nice. And you could even uh, give the water pump a try. So here I go, pumping away. Um, I think it's the first time I've had to pump water from a pump like that before. So here we go. Watch me go. Lots of fun. <laughs> Um, there's also, even on the side of the building, they've got a great attention to detail. They have a little, um, I don't know what to call that, crawl space underneath the house where I think they found a little tortoro last time. I didn't see anything this time. But you can go inside the house too, and uh, I was lucky to get a moment when it wasn't really crowded. There's not, not a lot of space there, but um, so this is recreated just like the movie. This is the little desk for the kids. You can see a little Kokeshi doll and uh, Satsuki's backpack. Here's a little living room too with the tatami mats. Uh, you have to take your shoes off before you go in here, of course. And all the cupboards are stocked up as they would have been in the kind of 50s, 60s when the movie was um, was made. Or well, cassette, I mean. And you can see that, yeah, it's all those drops there from uh, Grave of the Fireflies, too sad. And you can see all the stuff in the cupboards too. You can open these cupboards as well. You can have a look around, have a nose. Uh, going into the bathroom too. Remember this scene from the... Uh, zooming in on that nice towel but yeah here's the bath remember that scene where they were laughing really loudly to scare away little dust goblins and you can look well you can't go upstairs but you can go to the attic uh stick your head up there i'm sure i heard something i don't know if it's the dust bunnies or um they played a little speaker i'm not sure and there's the dad's study again from the other side so you can see some of those uh traditional uh japanese little statues and things like that so yeah Take a look around there. You can go through the kitchen as well. Nice uh, country kitchen. Another one of those water pumps you can use. Yeah, I thought I'd give that a go. <laughs> Pump some water for uh, the kitchen. Don't drink the water though. And you can look inside and find all these like antique cans and dried pilchards and whatnot. Yeah, very realistic. I even found some very rare old whiskey. Well, at least that's what the box said. And rummage through their drawers as well. Uh, find some old gloves. Poor mum's in hospital, but uh, you can still <laughs> rifle through her stuff. And it really had that kind of old smell as well. It was kind of uh, felt, felt very lived in. It was very interesting. So that was the main house. You can also follow a little path up the hill next to the house. Um, all the way up there. You can see the Don Dokomori sign. And then what is that in the background? So you can find Totoro himself. Um, looking a little bit scarier. A bit of a, a touch of uh, eldritch horror about Totoro this time. But uh, there he is. Um, a nice big statue. It's a pretty huge thing actually. And underneath, I'm going to see that now, you can see a little ladder. The staff kept pointing at the ladder um, saying you can go inside. I stuck my head in there. It was far too narrow for my childbearing hips, so um, never mind. So yeah, I guess you can go into the top. I think. There's a little gift uh, area too. You can buy some little lucky, uh, lucky charms. And there was, I thought this was a themed thing, but it's just a kind of fairly regular um, cable car to get down if you need to. There was quite a climb up. I wish I'd seen that the first time. Uh, on the way back from Dondokomori there is a nice uh, Japanese garden as well so check that out if you're into that. It's probably not the best season to go there but uh, here, here I was. And a nice water water garden as well. I think this would be quite nice in the spring. Um, I think those are cherry trees over there too so that would be really nice uh, cherry blossom season. And you can check out some of the 2005 modern art uh, or pretend you wanted to go there when actually I got lost on the way back to the Grand Warehouse. But there we go, very industrial. Uh, okay, so back to the Grand Warehouse. Next door is the Seishun no Oka. So this is the main event in the middle. This is the big house from... Um, or, or, sorry, I'll come back to that. There's the little tunnel under the house also, which is a bit reminiscent of Laputa. You can see the kind of special glowing stones down there. Bit of a random place to put it, but there we go. I had to wait this for ages because people were taking pictures with their dog next to it. It was, just it took forever. Uh, what else? Okay, so I made it into the station Nooka. There's my bus stop. And looking around, here is a recreation of the house from uh, Whispers of the Heart, Mimi o Sumiseba. And uh, you can go through. You can't take any film inside, so sorry I can't take any videos inside. But you can go out on the balcony like they do in the movie. I did sneak a peek inside through the window. I was outside though, so it still counts. You can see the... Um, little violin workshop down there very very uh, very cute you can even play a little violin if you have the skills which i didn't and then so yeah enjoy the balcony not quite the same 
nice view as it had in the, in the movie, but never mind. And there's also a tiny house next door uh, where you can find the Baron. And this is a scene from The Cat Returns, uh, Neko Ongaishi. You can see Muto in the front there and the Baron sitting in front. Uh, you can look from all angles as well, so you can enjoy all these little Easter eggs. Um, you can see, I think from one direction, you can see this little stone tablet with uh, Muta's legend. Uh, but yeah, very cute and uh, enjoy that. There's another Baron up there, it's very confusing, two Barons. And also there's this very strange um, phone box which I picked up and a uh, cat was meowing at me angrily. I don't know if I was supposed to talk in that or not. But definitely check that out, this is uh, yeah, a nice place to, to, to visit. Um, there's the clock inside, you can see the Baron statue, all that stuff. But that was it, that's the end of my Ghibli journey. So back to the elevator and back home. Back on the, oh, actually I changed my ticket so I didn't get the Hinatori back, but uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that little trip around uh, Ghibli Park. Definitely check that out. Um, and uh, okay, I'm gonna pass back to myself. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome back. Thanks for watching that video. Hope you enjoyed the tour around uh, Ghibli Park. Um, so some closing thoughts. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend going there. I know it's a little bit out of the way if you're in Osaka or Tokyo, because Nago is kind of in the middle. Um, but if you're coming here with the JR Pass for tourists, then definitely go to Nagoya and see that. Um, there's also another video I made uh, last week about other things I went to in Nagoya. Um, so check that out as well if you need some more ideas. Uh, I recommend try, try to get them all in one day, of course, because honestly, I didn't really feel like um, going there just for the two small areas was really in, no, enough for one day. Um, I got through it quite quickly, so yeah, um, so if you can group that with the Grand Warehouse, then definitely do that. Um, also, I think the timing, um, you have, at the moment, uh, I don't know if this is going to change in the future, you have to buy timed tickets, so you en enter at certain times, so you have to kind of plan out which places you're going to go at what time. So my advice would be go early to the uh, Dondokomori, because it's a little bit further away, you've got to... Um, have a bit of a trek to get there. Um, so go there first, That maybe leave about an hour to look around that, and um, let's say about 15 minutes or 20 minutes to, to get back to the main area. Then go to the Seishinoka, the Hill of Youth, and then um, finally, I guess it will be coming up to lunchtime, so around 12 or one o'clock, go into the Grand Warehouse. There's a restaurant in there. Um, so you can eat lunch and you can spend the rest of the afternoon just going around the, the Grand Warehouse. Um, of course, this will change a bit when there's a few more areas, but I don't know what they're going to be like yet. So um, you might need to make it a two day trip or I don't know. Um, that said, um, I said go to the restaurant in the Ghibli uh, Grand Warehouse. I didn't do that because I did that on a different day. There aren't really a lot of restaurants or places to eat around the park. Um, this, the Ghibli Park is not like, it's not like Disney World where everything's kind of connected and you're just going to a different world. These are all separate attractions. Um, so the rest of the park is just the park. Um, it's not a Ghibli owned park, it's the, um, what is it, the uh, Expo Park. So I recommend either taking, buying something in Nagoya uh, and taking it as a, like a little picnic because there is a green area outside you can you can have a picnic there if the weather's nice there is an inside um, uh, rest area too so if you want to take your food in there it's uh, that's okay um, but I kind of got stuck really I didn't know any of that and uh, ended up having to kind of buy stuff from Lawson the convenience store um, twice because they couldn't find anywhere else to go there was one curry restaurant but it was really tiny and it was full so I couldn't do anything there so that was um, a something I think they need to work on a little bit. Um, I don't know, I guess that's not under Ghibli's uh, control, but um, or some sort of snack stands or something like that would be nice. Um, yeah, that was one one little gripe I had about it, um, especially because I was you know, walking around for ages. I really wanted to sit down and eat something, not get like convenience store sandwiches. Um, the other part I thought, I, again, this I think this is the park's fault rather than Ghib Ghibli Park's um, area, but I thought the signage was kind of lacking a bit. I, I found it quite easy to get lost. Um, the route to between the Grand Warehouse and the Dondokomori was kind of like windy windy, lots of different paths as well. It wasn't always clear which way you were gonna go. And sometimes you get a sign saying, okay, this way to the forest, but then the path would be 
splitting immediately and you wouldn't know which one to go on and you could go the wrong way uh, I did definitely <laughs> so um, yeah I think they need to work on the signage a bit there is a shuttle bus around as well if you don't want to walk around um, but at the moment it's only twice an hour uh, yeah so there we go um, try, try and take that but make sure you know when the time is that it's gonna leave um, but uh, yeah other than that it's a really nice place to, to, to go um, yeah, like I said, definitely check out the Grand Warehouse and leave a lot of time because I spent about three hours there and even then I was kind of rushing to leave because I had to go catch my train. Um, yeah, so don't, don't um, you, you can spend a lot of time in there, uh, more, more so than the other places, I think. So that's my advice anyway. Um, yeah, there we go. So yeah, go, you should go. <laughs> Watch all the movies too, because they're really great. Um, well, almost all of them are great, but yeah, it's a, it's a good hit rate. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope that was interesting. Uh, leave any comments about or questions about the park uh, um, in the in the comments section. I'll, I'll look at all of those. Um, yeah, like this video if you found it useful. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more touristy stuff uh, or more just general Japan stuff. And please tell people about this channel. I, I'm really trying to get uh, bigger numbers. I'm, I'm almost at 500. I really want to get there for my second anniversary. Um, so yeah. Please uh, come back soon <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.